Hello everyone, I am Ron and I am the Game Design Instructor for the Academy of Entertainment Arts over at Dixie Hollins High School. If you are one of my students, it's Mr. Flowers to you, and welcome to this video tutorial. Good evening everybody. Uh, in this tutorial we are going to be going over uh, basic camera setup. We will not be using the camera object, but we will be using the internal uh, Game Maker basic camera first, just so you can kind of get a feel of how camera systems work. Um, you can go ahead and download this project file if you have not. If you haven't looked at the uh, the one for room transitions, this is the same project file from there, so you're welcome to download that one as well. And uh, yeah, so go ahead and open that up. Uh, I'm in room transition two, and I have this uh, camera object here. I'm not going to use this right now, so I'm going to go ahead and delete this. Boop. And all I'm going to do is go into a room here. And don't worry about me uh, killing the camera, because Game Maker uses some basic ones anyway. So in here, um, I'm going to come down to my room settings. And inside the room settings, uh, of course we have our width and height, so this defines the size of the game window and all that good stuff. Um, this tick down here says viewports and cameras. Go ahead and open that. First thing I want to do is enable viewports. Go ahead and make sure that's clicked. And this one says clear viewport backgrounds. Uh, if you don't do this, uh, sometimes you get like blurring and other stuff. Make sure that that gets cleared. And then um, you have a total of, what is this, eight cameras that you can pick from. Uh, so go ahead and open up viewport zero and make sure that is set to visible. And when you do that, you may see it, but there's this white kind of outline. If I uncheck that, see how it disappears? Now it does. That is our actual camera view. And then if we scroll down, we have camera properties and viewport properties. Now the difference between a camera property and a viewport property is the camera is the, um, the view into the room, whereas the viewport is what is displayed on the screen, the size of the window on the screen. To show you that, I'm going to come down here and I'm just going to set my width and my height here. I'll just do 10 and 10. So this is going to give me a very small camera. See that little square there? Actually, I'll do, I'll do something a little bit bigger, 128 by 128, just so you can see. So there, this little square here is what we will see into the room of our uh, based on our camera, and then the room will draw, or the game window will be drawn to this size here. Okay, so if I play that, and there we go, we have the entire game window is um, 1024, so 1024 pixels across by 768 pixels down, and if you look though, our view into the room is this uh, 128 by 128 square because each one of these boxes here, this is 64, this one's 64, so that's 128 across and 64, 64, 128 down. So your view into the room gets scaled to your game window. Go ahead and close that. And let's make this uh, more reasonable. So if I um, oh, I think you want to keep an eye on is the size of your viewport. If you make your viewport smaller than the size of your camera, it'll be a little bit weird. So, for example, uh, I'll set this to 64 by 64, and you'll see what Game Maker attempts to do. So my viewport is effectively smaller than my view into the game. And you end up getting... Um, your viewport size, which is 64 by 64, scaled down to 128 by 128, and you get this really squish kind of thing. So Game Maker is attempting to follow what I, the instructions I gave it, but it's a little bit bizarre. Just be aware of that. So the viewport itself is the size of the thing on the screen, and the camera is what you're, what you're seeing uh, at a certain resolution inside the room. So I'm going to set this back to 10, 24 by 768. And now I want to position my camera uh, relative to my character. I'm going to move my character down 
here to save my soul. And just so it's easier so I know where the bottom of the camera is going to be and all that good stuff. I want my camera to be um, 512. That gives me a good view uh, left and right of my character. And I want to see a little bit of on top and bottom, so I'll say 320. And you can see that this is kind of snapped way up here, and that's kind of annoying. Um, if I were to play from here, I would see this part of the screen. See that? See this part of the screen. Uncheck that. Now I'm going to come down to this little guy right here where it says object following. And I'm going to pick the object I want to follow, which is my player. So now when I play it, the viewport snaps to my player. Yay! And if I move, you can see how the viewport slides with my player. But it's a little bit off, right? So the viewport's a little weird. I'm going to go ahead and exit. And I'm going to scroll down to where it says um, my horizontal border and my vertical border. This is how far, so if I take my character here, just so you can see, this is how far to the edge of the border the character needs to be before GameMaker starts updating the position of the uh, camera. If you want your player to always be in the middle of the camera, then you want his position to be set to half of the camera's um, width. So, for example, if I want this to be exactly center, since I know the camera was set to uh, 512, that's what I set here, so 512 on the width. Then down here on my horizontal border, I can say half of 512, which would be uh, 256. I'll put my character back down here because he would just fall. Um, so I'll set that. And you can see that if I'm not at 256, uh, the camera does not go outside the view. But if I get to about 256 here, which is the middle of the camera, it starts moving. And it does stop at the wall. It won't go beyond the wall, which is kind of nice if you're using uh, viewports, the basic viewport setups. If I go all the way to the top, you can see that I can't see above there. It's about as far as I can go. But I can't see the bottom either. I want to be able to see a little bit below my character because not being able to see the floor is a little bit disconcerting. I don't know if there's like a pit here that I could fall on or die. So I need to change how that's seen as well. Um, so let's go to... Oh, you can also change the horizontal speed and vertical speed. This is how fast the camera updates. I'm not going to mess with those, but you're more than welcome to. I want this border to be... Um, I think I'll do 64. That gives me a little bit of the floor, which is nice. So 64 is nice, but I'm going to do uh, 128. That'll give me um, two tiles worth down, right? Because this is 64, this is 64, so that's 128 down. And that's really nice. And you can see that it doesn't matter where the camera is in the room um, because it'll always snap to the character when you have it set when you have it set to object following. If you want to move the camera's position in the room manually, you can't unfortunately drag it. Um, that doesn't seem to work. What you can do, however, if you scroll up, 
You can see under camera properties we have an X position and a Y position. This will change the starting position of the camera. So let's say I wanted the starting position of the camera to be where my character is. Then I could push it down uh, a little bit. So let's say uh, X at zero is fine, but I want the Y value because we're going down to be a little bit higher. So I could do uh, 320. And you can see it kind of jumps down a little bit more. Uh, how much further? Another. Let's do um, oops, uh, another 128, so 448. And that snaps like right there. If you're OCD, um, that's fine. But it doesn't really matter because the game's going to update it when you start the window anyway. So now on to the next problem. Go ahead and run the game. And we're going to do this thing where we walk to the next room. So here's my door. Here's my room. And... Whoa, what happened? Where'd my camera go? Oh man. Hey, my camera's back. Let's try that again. Where'd my camera go? So what you have to do is you have to set up, unfortunately, the camera in between the, the rooms. So if I go over to my other room, go to room one, I scroll down to my camera properties here, you can see that viewports has not been enabled, so we need to re-enable those, make sure we clear the buffer, um, and then set it so that it is visible. So there it is. But we also have to set our camera properties again, and we also have to set the object following and all that good stuff. So let's go back and uh, go ahead and do that. So our camera properties for the new room is going to be the same as the other one, so 512 across by 320 down. The object following will be our player object. And we had our distance at 256 and 128. And if I run it, we should get the camera looking like it's a smooth transition between the rooms. I come here and I go through. Nice. So unfortunately, you do have to set up each camera per room individually. Um, but that's the basic primer on cameras and how they work. In the next video, I'll show you a more complicated way of setting up a camera, but you don't have to really go through the motions of setting up each individual one. It'll be set up dynamically, and all you have to do is drop the camera itself into the new room, and it should do its job. Or you can set it to persistent. But with that said, um, Go ahead and save your work, and I will see you guys in the next video.